everyone and welcome to another great podcast we have a, a for you tonight uh port to the paranormal podcast live um we have a great guest joining us but before i do my introduction i just want to give a hello to everyone in the chat room and an apology to big rob sorry i missed the podcast tonight mate i yeah got stuck with family but i will make it up to you but hello blue sky lisa sarah g hello um the Mad Wicker, thank you for joining. Um, it's great to see you all in, Sarah. It's going to be a good show tonight. Um, so, yeah, so on to tonight's show. So we are bringing back a guest that we spoke to a little while ago, um, Daniel Class, owner of the Hinsdale House, um, also part of the Ghost Finders, um, part of Death Walker. So lots to talk about. As always, if you guys have... Any questions that you would like to ask, Daniel, please throw them in the comment box and I'll try my best to get through them. Uh, hey, Chris, but um, what I'm going to do is bring Daniel on now and get this started. Hey, Daniel, how you doing? Doing good. How, how about yourself? I'm very well, thank you. Been excited about talking to you about the Hinsdale House and the projects that you're doing. So, um, firstly, thank you for joining us. Um, Sarah's excited for the show as well. Thank you for joining. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So before we get into how you come about owning the Hinsdale House, how did you get into the paranormal from the beginning? Was it the Hinsdale House or was it something prior to the house? No, I, I was, uh, unbeknownst to me, involved with the paranormal from a young age. I grew up in a haunted house myself uh, where strange things happened. They actually did a, a television show called My Paranormal Nightmare based on our, my story. And my sister was also on the show with me. Um, wow. It was on a travel channel. I'm not sure if it was over in England or not, but uh, it was called My Paranormal Nightmare. You can always watch it on um, Amazon or something like that. But yeah, I, I mean, just nothing malicious, but just strange things. Always, oh, my parents were always making me think I was crazy. Um, you know, things were moving on their own, and I was always getting blamed for them because I was the big brother. Uh, we one day we went to church and came home on a Sunday and. Uh, there was like crayon drawings on our ceiling um, and wow. crayon sitting in the middle of our living room floor. Um, and it was always just kind of chalked up to um, pranks, you know. Um, I ended up buying that house from my parents because um, I thought it would be a good place. You know, I knew all the neighbors. I knew uh, my kids could go to the same school that I went to growing up. And I thought it would be, a, 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 you know, beneficial to have the location that I grew up in. I knew the house, knew the neighborhood. And uh, and then it started happening to my family. You know, they started experiencing the things and it was like reliving it all in my head. Uh, but now I actually had some, the, the deed and I was able to research the location and ended up figuring out um, what was what the problem was, you know, what was going on at the location. And um, we found that there were a little boy and a little girl that lived there that died of cystic fibrosis for the original owners um you know, going to the library and once i was able to acknowledge them and tell them that it was okay to go to the light that it seemed like it died down but every now and then we would still get a little pop in from them you know um the psychic i had gone to uh this is this is before i even believed in psychics my friend got me to go to a psychic uh and uh she told me right up right before i even paid her that there was two little children's spirits living in my house and uh, they were attached to something of theirs that was in the home. And uh, we ended up finding out that uh, up in the attic, um, I don't I don't know, like the houses that we have here, there's these little crawl spaces. There's like a little 
like a little box in the ceiling and mm. you have to pop that open and get a ladder to go up there. Uh, we ended up finding a painting of a little boy and a little girl playing with a dog that was just up against the back wall in the attic that would have been forgotten or lost had we not been looking for something. Because I would have never went up there. There was nothing, no reason for me to go up in that attic. And uh, I just kind of kind of felt like that was my first Scooby-Doo episode of my life. Um, wow. And I became so interested in researching uh, and learning how to communicate with the other side. Um, I started going to Gettysburg and Salem and going on all of the trendy places where you know, paranormal was a hotbed and just started learning um, from people, uh, people that have done it longer than me. Uh, Tim Shaw, who is a, a local to my area. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's been on a lot of shows. He's mm. been um, doing this for a long time, you know, kind of took me under his wing and gave me a lot of advice throughout my journey. And um, then, you know, I formed a team, an investigation team, just like everybody else, you know that's interested in this type of thing and started documenting what we did on YouTube and had a YouTube series called behind the shadows, which garnered thousands and thousands of views. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's, we are, are, I think one of our episodes has a couple hundred thousand views on it. Um, wow. so, I mean, it just kind of just had fun with it, you know, and learned and, and, uh, just kept going with it until uh, we came to investigate the Hinsdale house before I owned it. Yeah. So, you know, going through that as a young child then and then sparking that interest, you know, so you, you were getting guidance from people in the field already. But since doing it, have you made like your own sort of beliefs in what's real and what isn't real? Like, because a lot of people say about the demons and things like that. Do, do you believe in all that or do you come to a decision where you think it's very rare? What's your thoughts when it comes to dealing with demons? Well, I mean, there's definitely something out there that's negative. And uh, I mean, I've dealt with it on a few occasions in all the years I've been doing this. Um, it's it's not something that happens all the time. I mean, the Hinsdale house was said to have had demons, you know, and um, I've owned it for, what, eight years now. And yeah. I don't feel like I've come across the demon. I feel like I've come against negative energies, uh, but I don't. I, you know, compared to the case that I did in Niagara Falls, where we had to bring in a priest and, and whatnot, I mean, it was it's nothing compared to that. So right. I, I think there definitely is uh, definitely is a negative, negative energy out there of some kind. Uh, yeah. You know, I believe that you have to put everybody that you're dealing with belief systems into place when you're dealing with something like that. Like you have to understand their belief systems, because if you're if you're going into a situation and you're dealing with something that they don't believe in then you're not going to be able to help them no, definitely. you know what i mean so i feel like yeah, there's a lot of a um, lot of a lot of factors involved uh when you're dealing with something like that no, definitely and then you know let's go into the hinsdale house so you've lived in one haunted property before yeah and you you would think that would be enough for one person in a lifetime to deal with but then you come to the hinsdale house did you know it was haunted prior to taking on the property then well, I knew as a team, uh, so I normally booked the locations for our team to film at. Um, this, okay. partic this particular location, I did not. And uh, I was told by our co-founder of the group that they were going to brief us when we got there on everything. So I knew I was going into a haunted, uh, a potential haunted location that may have some stories that we have to try to figure out. Um, but I didn't know in depth of the location that we were going to, of how far back it went and uh, the negative attachments. And especially I didn't know that there was a failed exorcism. I actually had to take a break. Once I found out that I was in the house that this happened and I, I remember actually walking outside and it was the middle of December, snow, a couple feet of snow. Um, there were flies buzzing around on the inside of the house and I was thinking the worst. And I knew that I had to get out of that mind frame. Um, if, if this in fact was a location that, uh, did, ha did have a failed exorcism, uh, that we could be up against something heavy hitting there, you know? Wow. And, you know, when was the point that you made the decision to to buy the property? What made you want to purchase the Hinsdale house? So from the time that I started going there before I owned it uh, and investigating it, and there's some great friends of mine that were caretakers of the location. Um, they were called Believe Spirit Investigators in Buffalo, New York. Um, and they were they were trying their hardest to to resurrect the place, kind of what I'm, I'm doing with it now. Um, but they had an owner that was in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. 
And basically what was happening is the money that was coming in from the tours and stuff like that was just being funneled up there and nothing was really getting put back into the location and they had their hands tied. And it got to a point where, where you try to, I don't know if you've ever felt defeat, but where you put mm -hmm. your all into something and it just doesn't seem to be working. Um, yeah. they, had to, they had to raise their hands, you know, because they couldn't make the mortgage payments anymore. Um, all that they were getting for supplies were donated supplies, which, you know, which, which equated to patch jobs, you know, not getting it fixed. Yeah. And uh, it was just getting worse and worse. And they had to throw their hands up in the air with it. And then I, uh, I remember going there right before it was going to be torn. You know, they had a teardown date. It was the electrical and duct work. Everything was ripped out of there. Wow. And um, I had the most profound experience that night. Uh, and this is because I started researching other families that live there. Um, I, I remember standing in the kitchen and everybody was talking about the exorcism and nothing was happened. And I mentioned a, a family that lived there in the 80s, an older couple named the Misnick family. And they had both passed away and they had lived there for some time. So I had mentioned them and I had my K2 meter in my hand and I got goosebumps up my arm. The K2 meter went all the way to 500 milligals, and I felt like I was having a conversation with Flo Misnick. And uh, I asked her to hold my hand as we went up the stairs. Now, this is all, I mean, we documented this for our YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube page and check out the Hinsdale House episode, you're going to see like the K2 meter in my hand stay lit all the way up the stairs into the master bedroom, which I've never in all my years of investigating seen that happen before. Um, and then when we tried crossing over into the room where the supposed portal was, um, I lost her. The next morning, I posted a picture on my Facebook page of Hinsdale House, and I got a, a message from um, Flo Misnick's granddaughter out of the blue saying that was my grandparents' old house. I mean, what are the wow. synchronicities uh, with that? And um, I knew that at that point I wanted to try to save it. Um, I approached uh, Believe Spirit investigators and wanted their blessing because they're my friends, and they had put a lot of effort into trying to resurrect the location and... Uh, it's the one thing that I, I think in the paranormal field, you have to show respect to the people that, that you know, I mean, I there I had to respect them and what they tried to do. And I didn't want to go in and just make it look like I was trying to steal it away from them, you know. I, know. So yeah. I got their blessing. They shared all the information with me. We're, we're all friends to this day. And um, I called the bank up, the people that owned it, and told them that I wanted to buy it. And they told me that it was going to be torn down. Uh, no bank would insure the location. It had black mold. It had a uh, leaky uh, roof. It had 500,000 honeybees living in the wall. I mean, you name it, it, it needed so much work. So I had to come up with a cash deal to buy the location. Uh, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. But when everything fell into place, um, I felt like it was meant to happen. And then when, when you went to the bank, did you say that it's also a haunted location that you're talking about? Oh, they, they called it the ghost house. <laughs> They, 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 they call it the ghost house. They called it the ghost house, yeah. The, um, and when I called to make payments on the location, I'd say this is Dan from the ghost house. That way they would know which location right away. Um, <laughs> so they knew. Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh, that's funny. Yeah, the ghost house, they called it. And and the thing is, you actually um, allow other investigating teams to come in and investigate the Hinsdale house. Um, yeah, that was, that was the main purpose you know, for me to resurrect the location and, and hopefully be able to give it a voice by having different groups of investigators, uh, enthusiasts come in and try to make connection with the energies that were there to try to unravel the story of the location and why it is the way it was and try to hopefully give peace to the energies there and, and hopefully figure it all out. Yeah. And yeah, like you say, you found it now for eight years, but you've been invested, you've investigated it more than eight years. How many spirits would you say? Do you think there's multiple spirits there, or is yeah. there particular spirits that you become, in a way, in a weird way, like friends with that they come and communicate with you more than others? I feel like I feel like the the main energies there know who I am, uh, what I'm uh, what I'm attempting to do with the location, and I feel like they're very happy that we're trying to get the correct story told for that their sake and for our sake. You know, like nothing's. You know, because there's been so many, so much folklore about the location throughout the years, uh, which just comes from people's feelings or or whatnot. And and I, I want to be able to pinpoint things and be able to say, oh, this, this, and this, and this happened. 
you know, th these are the names of this or, 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 or whatever we can do to try to, to make, give, to give truth to the folklore. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, or we can say, you know, that's just a story. You know, there's no proof of that. There's no way to prove that that happened. Um, so in definitively saying this is folklore. This is, there's no hundred percent truth to that. And have you ever, um, have you been able to pick up specific names that you know that are in the prophecy? We have. And, and the cool thing about it is the teams that have come in, um, they've been able to get like EVPs of names and I can correlate that with the history that I have and say, oh, look at this. Oh, we have a, we have a McMahon, Michael McMahon, uh, who lived there in the uh, late 1900s, you know, or in the 1950s, or look at from this era, or it could be this person or this person, you know? So um, I believe that there's, different levels of haunting there but i i feel like there's uh it, there's also a power source there that's why it's so active you know with the underground water aquifer yes. uh, but it's cool because when when teams come with me and say has this does this name name mean anything to you and sometimes i'm i don't even i don't know all the history off the top of my head i'm like well let me take a look and see what i have and see if it matches up to anything on the the deeds and the history that we have Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But there's also a part of the history that we don't know. No, no, you know? That's it. And the history that you have built up and, you know, the documentation that you've done, have you been able to figure out, like, particular spirits? Do they have any kind of personality where you can say, well, I know which spirit that is? Is there specific things that they do that you're able to say this is that spirit because they do yeah. it all the time? Yeah. I mean, there, there's, uh, you know, there's spirits that will you'll, you'll smell like a smoke. And we'll know that it's Joe, um, who was Flo Misnick's husband. He was a big smoker. Um, or it could be uh, Phil, uh, Joe or Phil Dandy, who was also a smoker that smoked in the house. Um, there are sometimes you get the smell of like uh, Vicks Vapor Rub, which we believe is a correlation with Laura, um, who passed away, which was the daughter of the, one of the, Dan, uh, the Dandy family that lived there. Um, the, the smell of floral uh, we associate with Flo you know, because of, of the perfume that she used mm -hmm. to wear. So, I mean, little things like that, um, we can usually tell if, if we think we're going to have a good night, if something that we can smell or hear with our own eyes or, or nose with our senses is affecting us without even having a tool out yet. So, And, you know, being in the property all the time, you know, does it drain you emotionally, you know, being in that all the time or... Have you found ways to just deal with being in the Hinsdale house? So from the day that I bought the location, uh, one of my goals was to not be at the location all the time. Um, so I've amassed quite a good amount of people that will volunteer and help out at the location. Also, people that help out with paid doing the tours. And um, we are all on the same page, uh, but it's kind of like a rotation uh, of duties, you know, because I can't be there all the time. Um, my part of what I do is promote the location. I go on the road and talk to it, uh, like I do going to Festival of the Unexplained, being able to talk about the location. And after being at the Festival Unexplained and actually talking to people, uh, it just makes people more interested in wanting to go there. Tiffany Collette right there. She is one of my tour guides. She lives right down the, um, right down the hill. She's my closest ally for the Hinsdale House because if, if there's a group there and I'm, I live in Buffalo, he's right down the road. So she can get there like in five seconds, you know, and it's a, uh, she's experienced a lot of stuff with growing up in Hinsdale. She lives on the mountain that the, the house is on, but they've experienced stuff down by where she lives too. They call it the enchanted mountains of Hinsdale. So, but yeah, I mean, wow. part of my, I, I have had that feeling of suppression being there. Um, but I also try to make sure that the, the, that we're rotating the duties. So, it's not overwhelming for anybody. And what, what's the kind of response like when you when you speak to people and they don't know a lot about you and then you say that you're an owner of a haunted house and you know, and when you tell people what you do, you know, what's the response that you get? I kind of try to, uh, you know, start off with I'm, I make a TV show first before mm -hmm. I get into all the, the gory details. The, the gory of, bits, Oh, yeah. by the way, I own a haunted house that had a failed exorcism <laughs> too, you know, and... Uh, I like to go out at night and hang out in damp, dark places, you know, like it's so I kind of wait to see if they think that that's cool before I move on to step two, um, because 
it's not for everybody, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, uh, but for the most part, the reception, uh, the receptions that I've captured, uh, from people are pretty positive. It's a good story, you know, it is. Um, and Sarah bought your book when she met you at the festival, the unexplained and some of the stuff in it is absolutely great. You know, I don't know if I would survive in the house, if I'm honest, but <laughs> you would, you, you would know. survive. We, we, we would see. Um, but, but not in the hey, got a number of other projects that you do as well you know you're part of the ghost finders as well on parapet um also death walker as well you know you, you go to a number of different locations um supposedly haunted a lot of them have some dark backgrounds you know what's that like mixing with other people in the field you know is you know how do you find your feet with other investigators to do what you do and do what they do I mean, I feel it's a blessing because I never want to stop learning. You know, I never want to um, ever have a a, make it feel like I'm better than anybody else. So when we go, when I get booked to go to other locations as the Harris celebrity or whatever, (laughs) um, I I try not to play off that. You know, like it's there's people there that invested their long time and hours at the location that are probably better off doing the tour than I am. Than that than I am, and uh, but what I do like to do is share techniques, uh, maybe some things that have worked, experiment with everybody together, and learn from each other. Um, and that's kind of how I do it when I go to locations that I'm not as familiar with. Um, I don't, you know, I, I don't like I, I don't like the whole celeb pair of celebrity, you know, you know, I I don't know. It's just weird to me uh, because everybody's a lot. M- most everybody's in this for the same reason, you know, and. Uh, there's nothing that I've done except take some chances on some things mm. and they've worked out in my favor, you know? No, no, definitely. And you're, you're talking about sharing techniques that you use and, you know, what, what is your way of investigating? So you're going to a new location. What, what's your sort of getting it going and how you do things? Well, I mean, the first thing that I do is, is like to do like a base reading of the location. Um, just to see like if there's EMF, if there, if it's older wiring, um, what could be giving us false narratives when we're investigating. Um, uh, I like to just sit and listen for a little while just to hear the creaks of the location, if there's gonna be noises that will be made. So we're not in the middle of investigating and you hear that creak again, you're like, <gasps> did you hear you know, the whole, did you hear that thing, right? Um, so I like to just listen and, um, and hear what the, the location has, the noises and the sounds that the, location wants to give off and uh and then i would start an investigation after that yeah after i kind of have a feel of the land per se uh based on what the knowledge that we have of the readings and what's your go-to equipment because there's a lot equipment has evolved massively it has even into um you know the mobile phones you know itc apps and things like that you know what's your go-to equipment to do an investigation um my my go-to is my geo box um i love that i have a few of them um i also have a, a frank's box frank sumption uh who did the the portal uh to mm-hmm. the dead um but i have uh i like the basics you know like an evp recorder um i like uh emf meters uh like uh, uh rem pods things that will give me uh a sense that something is there so I can start trying to make it do an EVP of some kind or turn on the spirit box and try to get some communication going to try to get some answers. I like to record everything that I do, whether it's on video or uh, a recorder running so I can go back and listen after the fact, because a lot of the times I'm uh, talking and you're going to get it. It's weird, but if you're using a video camera, you will get it sometimes get an EVP through the microphone on the camera which you didn't know that you got. So and it sucks because you want to have that. That's why I like using the ghost box because you want to have a, a one-on-one conversation with something that's there. And I hate the fact that we have to like ask a question wait for a response, go back and listen to it five minutes later. Okay. So you said this, and I mean, who wants to have a conversation like that? If I was on the other side and I, that's how I had to communicate, I'd be like rolling my eyes and being like, what the hell, you know, come on, let's get us something more up to date here. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, I mean, in the experience that I've had, the uh, using the geo box is it's I've gotten some pretty pr- profound responses, um, and I've had Nick using them on the show, um, but we've also um, 
evolved, like you said, in different ITC. And uh, we've, we've been experimenting with a lot of different new devices, new inventors uh, along the same lines of uh, uh, Frank Sumption. You know, so I mean, mm -hmm. we, we, it, if you've watched Death Walker, you'll see lots of new devices being used to, to experiment mm -hmm. with. And that's what we tried and, to do in season three. And it's great that you're saying that you're using new devices to see how they work and, you know, what it's like. Do, have you come across a piece of equipment that you don't particularly like using or are you open to pretty much trying anything with I'm open uh to pretty much using anything um even Ouija boards uh dowsing rods I mean these are all primitive uh mm. things um I don't particularly like using them but I will if it's going to garner some type of result um I mean I've even heard of like uh people using the styrofoam peanuts and putting those on the floor and waiting right. to see if those move. I mean there, there's there's some cool things that you can do that are primitive that may garner some type of result. So, I mean, I'm not against them, but I'd, uh, if, if I'm going to use something like that, I'd rather have somebody there that's uh, more of an expert in that area than I am uh, in using them because uh, it's just not something that I use every day, like dowsing rods or a Ouija board, you know? No, no, definitely. And, you know, with all the locations that you've done, this could be either from the Hinsdale house or, um, you know, free Death Walker, um, the Ghost Finders. Is there a particular moment that you've had that was like your outstanding moment that of evidence or something that's happened to you? And where was it? Uh, I've had a lot of profound moments, but um, one that I always fall back on is this. It's an old theater called the Riviera. And um, I was with my team investigating there. And uh, they were all on the stage kind of doing an experiment with K2 meters. Uh, they had them lined up on the right part of the stage, uh, the middle of the stage and the right side of the stage. And they were calling out the actors and actresses to come on the stage and bow. And then the rest of the team was in the audience kind of clapping as they were making announcements. Um, what I did is I kind of left that experiment and I went up into the balcony in the mezzanine. And we had some equipment just running up there, a laser grid, a camera and some EMF detectors. And I sat down at the baby grand piano and I, I get chills thinking about it, but I remember looking over to the left and I saw this shadow kind of just like form out of the wall over by this other piano. And it started mm -hmm. gliding through the, the laser lights. And I, and the thing that was, wasn't making sense to me and it still doesn't make sense to me is that the, the, the laser grid was not penetrating through this black shadow. So to me, there I'm thinking this this thing has some type of mass and it's coming right at me, and I kind of took a breath and I was like freaking out a little bit, you know, and uh, it was probably a couple feet in front of me and I took a deep breath and probably stopped breathing for a few minutes and then it glided into where the projection room would have been, um, and I was scared. I'm not gonna lie. I got up and I ran down the stairs out into the street <laughs> to get some fresh air, um, and uh, my the the photographer in my group that specialized in photography i told them to go up there and plaster the balcony and, and with pictures and we ended up capturing a picture of it um and it was amazing and the video feed that we had was lost uh one of the hard drives broke on our computer but at least we still have the picture um but it was that's probably one of the most profound it was kind of the beginning of, of my investigative career uh mm -hmm. investigating so i think nowadays if i were to see a shadow I'd probably go up, walk up to it and try to have a conversation. But um, yeah, I, it's it was scary <laughs> and when when you first experience something like that, and then you want to when you want it to happen again, and it doesn't always happen, you know. Uh, when yeah. you first experience something, you're like, hopefully that happens on this one. Hopefully, you know, every time you do an investigation, you want that to happen again, but it doesn't. So you got to be prepared. Yeah, you got that. That's the thing. You you never know what's going to happen. You know, that's. Uh... The thing with this film and what what's it like for your family to watch you do what you do you know because that everyone's had those experiences that have been quite scary like you were just saying what's it like for your family when they see you come home and you know you've had that sort of experience and you're a bit washed out from it all do, do they does it impact them in a way to see you like that um for the most part they're very supportive of what i do um i mean it's I, it, I've tried to like not bring it home as far as like, uh, equipment I try to keep in my office. Mm -hmm. Um, I, but I try not to, to bring it home as much, you know? So, um, when I'm there, I'm dad, 
uh, but they all know what I do. You know, like I've been to my kids' classrooms at school talking about it and uh, wow. invited back every year. But I mean, um, if I could ask for a better supportive unit, I don't think I could ask for that with what, what I've been dealt with my family. And uh, they, they've been very supportive of what I do. Uh, they know like when I have to go on the road, it's it's work, you know, it's a job, you know, I'm working. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, that, I mean, that's the best support system that you can have as that as them so and will we see your kids in the future being come paranormal investigators and do investigating with you do you think uh i think so i mean they've already been getting involved with uh um so like death walker my two girls wow. have been on the show as as uh extras when we're doing the reenactment shoots uh and uh my my little one shaylee got to play tessa when she was a young girl at the hospital in an episode and so she was in the hospital bed and it, that was kind of cool and then my my older daughter this past year got to play the school teacher uh in front of the classroom which was kind of cool um so uh, the they've been they've gotten involved with it my oldest son is also he likes to go investigating with me uh he's been on a couple investigations with me he's he's going to be 21 this year crap wow. i'm old <laughs> my wife say that. my wife's been to the hinsdale house and uh when she gets in there, the first thing she does is pick up the broom. I'm like, honey, you don't you don't have to clean. You know, she she starts cleaning. It's like shaking my head. But she's wow. uh, she's she's very supportive. And uh, I when my kids probably get older, she'll probably be able to come on the road with me more. That'd be cool. It's good. It's great about the support system and how involved your kids want to be as well. Because, you know, it's nice to know that you can have that connection with someone that you you're so passionate about. Um, it's great. And you know, going forward, what, you know, we know that you're coming back to the UK in September. Yes. You're going to be a speaker at the Festival of the Unexplained. Um, you know, what you look, what are you looking forward to coming back to the UK? Uh, it's the probably meeting people, the just being able to meet and speak to the people. It's, it's, it's a very, it's rarity when you're making friends throughout the United, uh, the United States and being able to meet them. But when you make friends, over in the UK, uh, and it's it's not as easy just to jump jump on a flight and go have coffee with somebody, but being able to be at a, a festival like this where we can all come together and just get to sit down and talk and and experience each other's worlds, it's a uh, that's the that's the funnest part about it for me. And the way that Karen and her team does the uh, festival, the unexplained, is is unlike any other. You know, it's it's uh it's not a typical it's not your typical para, paranormal conference. Uh, it's it's more interactive when you get to interact with all the guests that are there, and mm. it, it makes it very special for me to be able to go to something like that and, and be able to connect with so many people. Yeah, we um, Sarah took me this year, uh, last year, to so the last one, and it was just it was like a it was just great. Everything it's like, about it's, it. like a, it's like a family reunion, kind of in a way. It, you know, like was, the people that are there become your family for the weekend. It, yeah, it's it's just fun, and then having a drink with everyone and. You know, it was just such a great time. And if people want to go and experience it, I know there's some tickets left. Uh, Karen, if you're still in the room, please put the link into the Festival of the Unexplained. Um, you know, it is a great weekend, loads of great guests. I think this year, another great lineup. You're going to be back. You've got Dave Schrader, um, Cindy Kayser, loads of people coming. So Shane be, Pittman. Uh, yeah, Shane Pittman as well. So it's going to be a great weekend. Um, and did, you know, did you find the because you did an investigation while you were here with the yes. first time around? Yeah, Bosworth. Did, right. Yeah. Did you find that there was a difference in in the way spirits communicate here to the to the way they communicate in the US because of the history here, or was there anything different that you found? When you um, I just I found it was interesting to say that I came from the United States uh, to investigate there. Um, we did get quite a bit of interaction when I was there the first year. Uh, with the tools that we brought. And I think that the the people that we investigated with had a great time. Uh, but as far as like it, trying different things, um, just be, I think just being able to say, uh, you know, I came from far, far away to, <laughs> to uh, try to communicate with you uh, helped. Um, uh, it, it was really cool. It was really, really neat experience. And I know that Karen has some special things planned for this year. So that it's gonna probably even make the experience even better. It's going, to, it's going to be another good weekend you know yeah. you can tell already if it was anything like last year's one yeah it's going to be amazing 
So, but no, definitely. And and for you, like you're doing a lot of projects already as it is with the Hinsdale, Death Walker, Ghostfinders. But is there a project that you got in mind that you would like to do that you've not yet done? Is there anything that you're thinking of that you would love to do or? I mean, all the things that I've dreamt about are like with Death Walker, uh, the next season that we have coming out, we're going to be having a, a two part series on Hinsdale. Two parts So we've actually spent quite some time there with Nick and his wife, Tessa, uh, Nick's cousin, Justin filming and doing mm -hmm. reenactments and, and uh, being able to tell the story of the location and kind of updating everybody since paranormal lockdown. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what put it back on the map. And um, Nick's been thoroughly involved with the location since he came there. And uh, we've been able to accomplish a lot. We've been able to put to rest some rumors of the location. Uh, we've been able to uncover things that uh, otherwise probably wouldn't have been uncovered had he not been involved. And uh, I, I wish I could talk about them, but when season four comes out, we have to deliver it for the UK in March. So you'll be able to watch that come this coming March or whenever the whenever they decide to release the, the episodes. But I'm sure that once we deliver, they'll put, be putting them out fairly quick. So, And I believe in the UK, you can see that on Discovery Plus. Is that yes, right? Yes, correct. So, um, you know, and all the episodes that they've done so far are on Discovery Plus now. So if you haven't, go and check it out. Um, just a quick question from Nancy. Um, beside your childhood home and Hinsdale House, do you have any other haunted properties? Not that I physically own, but I have friends in the business that that own properties locally. Um, um, my friend Brooke Wag Wagatha, Brooke Prezel now, um, her mom and bought the Wildwood Sanitarium, which is a, a location that I promoted uh, and I still promote. Um, they are half hour away from Hinsdale. And uh, they've been friends of mine for years. They used to come to my investigations with Greater West New York Paranormal Society. When I first bought the Hinsdale house, they were front and center to help paint and fix up plays, patch holes, do whatever. And Brooke was just a little girl back then. And uh, now she's taken over the ownership responsibility of the location. And it's a great local location. We have uh, so many places around here. Uh, that people can go to. Like I've had teams come over from the UK and I kind of double as a, a, a booking agent too, I guess, in a way, because <laughs> they're like, well, what else can we do when we come here? Well, I got a lot of things that you can do. And uh, uh, I hook them up with different locations that they can go to. Um, I hook them up with, uh, you know, I mean, they're, we're very close to Niagara Falls. Uh, so, I mean, there's things that they can do tourist wise. I'm seeing one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot and I, and I can direct them to some underground things that, uh, like the thunder rocks that were these giant boulders that were placed there by glaciers in the middle of the mountains and that they can go check out. And it's just kind of like a spiritual feeling when you go to these things, you know, like the, the ancient the native Americans, uh, really play, paid homage to these giant boulders that were in the middle of the forest. And just to be able to go there and touch them, you can see like shells on them from the bottom of the ocean. Um, so high up uh, is pretty cool. But the, I mean, there's tons of stuff to do. And uh, uh, I've always said if, if anybody's coming here, even if you're coming from a different state or uh, let it be a different country, I'd be more than happy to try to uh, hook them up with whatever I, connections I have to try to get them to do what their dreams are of doing. Even if it's, you know, going to Melbourne Manor in Iowa or going to, you know, a different location. I, I pretty much and all the years I've been doing this going on the road, I've met most of the owners of these locations. So I know most of them. So it's an easy, easy phone call. If, uh, if a team wants to get in someplace and they have a date open, we hook, hook them up, you know? And with, with um, you know, when you're networking with people and people find out what you do, do, do you get invites to people that say their house is haunted? Can you come and check out their house? All, the, you do all the time. Uh, all the time. I have a running list um of places to check out i mean it's it's a huge list and we keep adding as we keep getting them we keep adding them to the to the list and and when we're researching locations to do uh for death walker or researching locations for our team to do or or, or if we're going to do a private investigation you know we keep those all handy and uh try to reach out to the people as we as it comes up you know availability comes up wow uh, absolutely great um and you know, with, you know, what, what's your main goal with 
the paranormal as a whole? You know, what, what do you want to see happen in this field? Uh, I, I, I wish people could kind of just, um, my, my goal is to try to make everybody get along, you know, like it's not, not a situation where, you know, your goal might be different than my goal, but that doesn't mean we have to, you know, bust on each other because of your belief system in this, or I believe this, or it, it really shouldn't matter. Um, I think any, but whether it's good or bad, um, you know, it's, it's good. And, you know, and, and just trying to get everybody to kind of understand that, you know, this person's goals might be to be uh, a, a famous YouTuber. This person's goal might be to, you know, to, to make a television show. This person's goal might be just, they just want to investigate, you know, uh, locations every weekend. And uh, it doesn't, doesn't mean just that you have to trash on a YouTuber or trash on somebody else just because they're doing something different than you're doing, or maybe they got paid for something, you know, it's a big no, no in the field. You can't get paid. Um, but if somebody does something, a cert pro provides a service for somebody, and they want to get take a donation for gas or something like that. I don't have I don't see a problem with that. You know, like you're you're putting your time and effort into something. And if you're giving some somebody some closure, you know, then you're doing that. And the other thing I see is like a lot of it's like psychic warfare, you know, like the the, the psychics are always saying, well, this person was wrong or this person did this or that. I, I think that if if you have good intentions and you're trying to portray the best intentions that you can on, on a location and the people that you're trying to help, you're, de you're dealing with people, sometimes people that have been mentally screwed up from this. You, you want to try to put them on the right path mentally mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just try to work together, you know, try to understand each other. Don't, don't blast somebody on Facebook. If you have a question, reach out to them and say, why did you come? How did you come up with this? Or why did you think this and give your explanation and then, Use that power and that knowledge is power rather than trying to make somebody look bad, you know, because you don't know what somebody's thinking or what or why they're reacting the way they do. Maybe they have an EVP or maybe they have a piece of evidence that they could share with you to kind of coincide with what they felt. And then you're using that as as power rather than, you know, trying to like slam somebody. So I just I just I'd love to be able to see people just kind of work together a little bit more as opposed to um, trashing each other. No, that, that's fair enough. And I think that is important. You know, it, the, this field is so open. There's no real right or wrong, I would say, because we don't know everything. And no. I think a lot, a lot of what we, we're trying to find out, we won't really find out until our time here on Earth is done. And then we cross over to the other side and then we see what's happening. But just make the most of it. And I say enjoy it as well. Enjoy what we're doing. I, I say like knowledge is power, right? So a lot of like what we do at the Hinsdale house too, um, we have teams when they come kind of jog, jot down what their experiences were. So we have that data um, and we've been keeping this data for at least the, all the years that I've been there and, and the team that was there before me had the data as well. And we're going to actually be putting all this out into a book uh, wow. for the teams that come in there. Um, the other thing that we do, uh, which is kind of unique, actually, Vicki, Scott Lawson, she's uh, one of my assistants. She works, at, she's from Den uh, from California, but lives in Denmark, um, came up with the idea to um, put uh, scannable barcodes around the house. Uh, and when you scan those, you're going to get the, the history uh, evidence oh, yes. of that, just that room. So like the one room, this is what happened in this room. So that way there's no deviation of the, the history and the story as teams come in there, they can actually scan and learn. You can get an interview from the priest that did the exorcism. You can get an interview from Clara Dandy who lived there in the seventies that was experiencing all this stuff that the book Echoes of a Haunting was written about. Um, and you can find out more, you know, as you're doing your investigation there, which is really cool. That, that is cool. It's a bit like um, when I went to New York, we went over to Ellis Island where the, where, where at the time where they were bringing all the Im immigrants over. Um, uh -huh. And, but now when you go in, they give you like a box and the headphones and you just scan the box and that specific room or the items that you're looking at, it tells you the whole story about what happened and how it all come together. So yeah, exactly. that would be absolutely great. That would be a great way to to shed light on the history of the location for people. That are yeah, I mean, we course. have, uh, we want to expand it as well to the outside, but uh, where the location is, it's hard for Wi-Fi. So we're getting Wi-Fi extenders put in in the spring so we can actually... Yeah spread the Wi-Fi out onto the property and we're going to add 11 or 12 more scannable uh, barcodes onto the property. 
Yeah. Um, Lisa just put in the comments just to mention, uh, respectfully, if someone is faking evidence, it's not helping people. So I think what she's trying to say is that if they're faking it, it doesn't help when you're being honest and you put your stuff up. It sort of causes that conflict, doesn't it? I'm, 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 a, I'm a true believer in karma, you know, and uh, I think that <laughs> Uh, me trying, me calling out somebody that's faking evidence isn't going to be good for me and it's not going to be good for the person that's doing it. it what's going to end up happening is we're not stupid. You know, the people that are in this field and doing things the right way aren't dumb, you know, and we all, uh, nine times out of ten, I'm not watching a YouTube show to, to try to learn about the location. I'm doing my own research, doing my own thing, and um, I feel like karma's a bitch, you know, and if somebody's doing doing the location wrong, it's going to come back to haunt them. And I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen with investigators that have put their stuff out on Instagram and YouTube, and it comes back to haunt them when they when they do the, do the location wrong. So um, it's not my job to police that. It's not anybody's job to police that. Um, you can be upset about it if you want, or you can take your energy and focus on something positive and try to do something good for the location as opposed to whatever the negative would have been and trying to focus on negative. I feel like, like, I don't know, like, I just feel like I've in a way have been reborn uh, with that thinking process because there's been the times in the past where I've just focused on negative stuff. And it's like, this isn't accomplishing me anything. Um, if I would have mm -hmm. taken the time and effort that it took me to focus on the negatives that were happening, uh, I, I might have missed my calling or missed doing something that was important. So, no. I, I, you know, I just try to remember that, you know, focus on you, I'm, focus on what you're doing I'm, and, not, I'm, and karma will come back to haunt them one way or another. Really. Um, Kelly's just said, uh, does Dan know there is a picture of the Hinsdale house and a stone in the haunted Monroe house? Yes, I did. I did know that. And I think that that's cool because and there a lot of locations are doing that. Um, I have I have some pieces of other locations at the Hinsdale house. Hey, um, um, yeah, I have uh, uh, pieces of Wildwood Sanitarium. I have uh, some other sanitariums uh, pieces at the house, and I know like Wildwood has a piece of the hanging tree of Hinsdale. It's cool to, in a way, kind of promote each other, you know. So it's kind of neat. Cool. And just uh, why do you think like? Again, it's not something that we're definitely going to know, but why do you think that we are surrounded with spirits? Why do you think that they're still here? I think that, I mean, I just feel like our energy is dispersed as we die, you know, like we're, we're our energy is still there. Uh, and we just have to, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's, hard, it's a hard, it's a tough question because I, I, if all the people that have passed away or died have energy on this place, it's going to be pretty crowded, you know? Is it like a, is it overly crowded or does it dissipate like in Coco, you know, the Disney show Coco when yeah. you stop thinking about somebody, does their energy dissipate? Like, uh, does, is energy power, like our, is our focusing on someone or something, giving them the power to communicate with us? You know, like it's, 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 it's really difficult to think about. And I, I, I've known that to be true, like with some of my friends that have passed away, you know, like when you start thinking about them, it's like a collective consciousness that wow. that maybe is giving them energy to come through and speak with you. Uh, it's it's interesting. It really is. I know we won't find probably find out till we die, but on, in the meantime, keep pushing forward. Yeah, definitely. Um, so just another comment here. My best uh, psychic remote viewing session so far was from the Hinsdale House with Richard Eastet. So brilliant. Um, so yeah, so just before I do let you go, um, I just want to say firstly, thank you so much for spending some time with us this evening and telling us about the Hinsdale and stuff that you've done. But where can everyone go and find your your stuff? Can you give your like social media platforms a bit of a shout out so they can go and follow you if they're yeah, not? Yes, so uh, Daniel Class, my name, just like it appears on the screen, all, all together though, dot .com. Um, there'll be links to all my social media that I'm involved with. I tend to use uh, X, um, Facebook, and Instagram the most, but I do hop on Snapchat once in a while. I'm just, as they come out with these things that my kids like, it's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I do a lot on, oh, there, that's Jackie. That's uh, Jackie. That's actually Flo Misnick's granddaughter, who I spoke about earlier. Um, hi, Jackie. 
Um, yeah, so that's 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 the that's the that's the person that reached out to me after that investigation. And we Jackie's actually been part of the house since I've been involved with it. And she uh, comes up there. She does tours. She connects with her grandmother. So it's it's really cool. Thank you, Tiffany. Danielclass.com. All of my social media is on there. Any there's a click for events that I'm involved with. Uh, so you can if if I'm going to be going to an event, uh, you can come and hang out. Um, and everything that we're that we're involved with is right on that. That's where I kind of like my made it easy. So one place, and then you just click the link. <laughs> Brilliant. And like we said, anyone watching from our side of the water in the UK, Daniel will be joining a great lineup at the festival on the Unexplained in September um, at Bosworth Hall. So you know, if you want to check that out as well and meet Dan in person, um, you know, go and have a look. Get your tickets booked. I think they've still got some great um, tickets available, so definitely check that out. A lot of them um, are sold out already, though, so don't don't wait. No, no, don't wait. Um, but what I have also done, all of Dan's social media links are in the description. So if you go back into the description at the bottom of the page, um, there's links there, and you can click into it, and it will take you straight over to Dan's social media. So um, definitely. And just the last, um, you know, you've got a book on Amazon, haven't you? I do. Can you just give a shout out if anyone wants to go and check out your book as well? Yeah, it's called Hinsday House American Haunting. Uh, it's available on Amazon or you can go right to danielclass.shop, which is uh, connected to my website. Uh, and I can actually send you one directly for me. More royalties come directly to me when not purchased on Amazon. So I could actually sign the book for you and, and mail it out for you if you want to do it that way too. So yeah, so definitely check out his book because it is a good book about the Hinsdale House. But um, again, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'll let you get on because I know you've got a limited time, but it'll be great to catch up with you in the future. Um, Absolutely. And, and it'll be great to see you in the um, UK in September. But I can't I'll let you go. It's going to be great. But yeah, thank you again. And we will definitely catch up with Daniel soon and see what's going on further down the line with his journey in the paranormal. Sounds thank good. Thank you so much. Take thank care. Much. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. So um, what a great um, chat with Daniel, you know, always a pleasure doing so much with his project. So again, just to give a shout out, if you want to go and check out any of the stuff that Daniel's doing, he is part of the Ghost Finders that you can find on Facebook, part of Death Walker, um, and then again, uh, the Hinsdale House, you know, so definitely go and check out um, Daniel's social media pages, uh, definitely worth a uh, a check out some of the evidence that he's captured over the years that he's been documenting uh, the hauntings of his location and the stuff that he's doing outside of the Hinsdale House. Um, again, just want to say thank you to everyone that joins us and shows support. It's always great to see your chats in the comments. We will be back soon with another show, hopefully in the next two weeks, I believe. So um, if you're not following our page, head over to Portal to the Paranormal on Facebook, YouTube, um, and hit the like, follow, so you always get notified of what's going on with us. And we will be heading back out in lo um, location in March. We've got a few locations booked um, for investigations, so we will be bringing the lives back of our investigations and see what we uncover from some great locations. I think we've got Wetherham Manor, um, an old manor house with a lot of um, history, dark history as well um so definitely check out our facebook page for those updates but again thank you everyone for joining us and i will see you back here soon but for now have a great rest of the evening and take care <laughs>